the next stop, Budapest. So all five of these friends were alive and completely the same in 1897. I get that vampires are immortal, and you could even convince me that Frank and Mummy Dearest are the same. But do wolf persons and invisibles not age either? Tickets, ladies. Character doesn't look at obviously disguised characters for ostensible comedic effect cliche. What is this? Another Scooby-Doo sequel? I'm about to want to freak out. Not only is this German child speaking English, but he's speaking modern English slang in 1897. I am now pretty sure young Friedrich von Krakaschmidt here can travel through time. Except if he goes forward, he has to live as an old man. And if he goes backwards, he ends up as a child. So whenever he tries to tell anyone, they either think he's a child playing make-believe or a senile old man. My point is I'm already so bored with this movie that I'm writing other movies in my head. And this can't be a good sign. I am Professor Abraham Van Helsing. Yes. One of the Van Helsings. Expo's introduction. Oh yeah, remember when the famous vampire hunter Vanthony Helskins used the laser gun to subdue Dracula? Always an underrated part of that legendary story. I know, we haven't even gotten into the movie yet, but seriously, why isn't he firing this f***ing gun? He's got him dead to f***ing rights. Oh, he survives this. And 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 this. Sure, it's a cartoon, but just remember that death or danger has exactly zero stakes for anyone in this universe, considering this movie attended the Wiley e. Coyote School of Surviving Things. That's Sonny. She doesn't cry. <laughs> she bites. The thing I love most about the Hotel Transylvania is the adorably casual cannibalism. Mavis looks less like a married 126-year-old vampire than a millennial that used a gift card at the Lazy Raven that her cousin gave her last year. The day I married Johnny was the best day of my life. Oh, awesome. Johnny's back from the last two movies. Anyone care? Johnny. We're not allowed to bring our dogs, <gasps> uh, I mean our pets, everywhere. This seems like a very simple and important rule that should land these two assholes in giant trouble. You can even find someone to zing with on your phone now. What? Really? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Setting easy Tinder humor aside, why would it be Hollow Man that brought it up? Isn't he the one person without a profile pic? I'm looking for a date. Skip. I'm lonely. I understand. You want baloney. What do we do in this part of the film? To fill some time before we leave for a boat, boss? I don't care, just put the entire trailer in there. Oh, you know what? That's why you're the boss, boss. Not into tentacles. Wait, if dating apps in the monster universe exist, there would totally be a vampire-specific one. It took like three seconds after Grinder was released for one-eyed Christian farmers with neck tattoos meetup.com to start. And a vampire one wouldn't even have to be that specific. Match found? Forget the fact that Draken Black here didn't even swipe that picture at all. What kind of dating app immediately video calls a person after it finds a match for you? Dad? Eavesdropping, barging in, and cock-blocking. Or the old boner killer trifecta. You're absolutely right. I think the only specific direction Adam Sandler was given was to use the most annoying register in his vocal range. <laughs> Some family time? Are you a monster? This is clearly a setup for them to get on the boat, right? If so, how did they know Mavis was thinking about a vacation right this second? And that this TV is on? And how did they even take the TV over in the first place? I can deal with all kinds of fantastical creatures in this movie, but this is some bullshit. Ladies and gentlemen. As crazy as this looks, still not anywhere near as batshit insane as Gremlins 2. Can I stow that for you, sir? All right, thanks. <laughs> it's funny because they're monsters and all monsters are assholes, I guess. Is it funny? Also, why do they have to take a monster-specific airplane at all? They were riding perfectly well on the train a few centuries ago before Van Hot Pocket showed up. And why doesn't Dracula have his own boat specifically for these purposes? Bobby. That would be lovely. God bless Adam Sandler for doing the work of bringing attention to the genital trauma humor this country needs in these trying times. I mean, since every day in this country feels like a new kick in the balls, why shouldn't our movies reflect it so authentically? 40 hours in a closet-sized room with you and Uncle Bernie, arguing who was more attractive, Cleopatra or Nefertiti. I'll admit that 40 hours is a long time, but it's not like they were talking about the structural integrity of a steel-reinforced casket man. They're discussing intimate details about two of the most attractive women in the history of history. That's hardly a f***ing snooze fest. I can't wait to spend time with the people I love most. This series is clearly an exercise in stretching the very limits of Adam Sandler's tolerability to a film audience. Getting there, then increasing it by 3,000%. There you are, Tinkles. The f*** is up with this giant puppy. Why is it here and why do we care about it? Wait, there was a f***ing short I had to catch? In addition to two other movies I'm forced to sit through? I can't believe I'm saying this, but f***.
that puppy! Sure, most, if not all, of these assholes are immortal, but incredibly human Johnny survives this. Who made you such an amazing daughter? It's like Adam Sandler watched Steve Carell in the first Despicable Me and said, hey, I can easily do a borderline offensive Eastern European accent for a similarly unlikable and ghoulish character for three stupid movies too. Game on, Steve! This is an absurdly large ship, right? So why are there so few people booked on it? There were only a couple of dozen on the plane, and we haven't been shown anyone else board it. Yeah, what's up with that? Other than a cheap excuse to show more Tinkles footage. Not even qualifies as a pet in this universe. They literally have a blob of slime that travels with them. Is that not hard to clean up after? Darling, what's a movie that we take the kids to that we don't have to explain awkward things afterwards? Like, what kinds of things? I mean, Hotel Transylvania 3 is playing. Oh, that's perfect. There's certain to be no casual bestiality that will require some sort of discussion. Say hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. What in the Van Helsing even is this movie? Oh, come on, give me a seaweed rewrap. Wow, it sounds like everything we can do at our hotel. Oh, so he's surly again now? Tell you what, I'm just gonna add 20 cents for each time Drax a grumpy dickhead. Then is talked into having fun, only to appear in the very next scene as a grumpy dickhead. That's nice. Frank, fire bad, remember? Despite his asshole demeanor, Drac would be excellent at CinemaSense. What? What am I saying? Because of his asshole demeanor, Drac would be perfect at CinemaSense. Inifini, fanny, unawawa? Oh no, he's having a heart attack! Or he's recycling the exact thing he did in his SNL audition. Either way, it's bad. We're here, we're Harry, and it is our right to be scary! Hang on, is this literally an allegory for the gay cruise experience? Is that okay to do? Have they checked with the proper authorities? I'm just saying someone's gonna be offended. Whoa! The fish are acrobats! They're fish crabats! Really? Fish crabats is the best you could come up with? I mean, acrobats is right there. Or Three Ring Circus. Cirque de Filet? Don't try to go portmanteau to toe with me, mister. No, no, not okay. Not okay! Somehow Adam Sandler's initial script reactions made it into the final film. I... I... Thing. Well, you might want to change your front cape then. I went to the moped store, I said sell it. Salesman's like, what up, what's your budget? I genuinely have no clue why these fish are doing a spoken word version of a Macklemore song. But it feels funny and subversive. And since there's nothing else like that in the movie, I'm gonna angrily send this Macklemore moment instead of registering my appreciation for its inclusion. So Blob No Heart here is asexual and procreates by getting sick and vomiting up its children. Does that mean that Tums are birth control? Is Ipecac an aphrodisiac? Are Blob frat parties full of new kids by the end of the night? I have so many questions. How are these obviously feral puppies not considered pets? God damn it. That no pet sign at the beginning was the stupidest part of a very stupid movie. Add five sins, damn it. I'm still not sure I understand. You take my kids all day on purpose? Dear gluten-free god in unleavened heaven, another science story. This movie doesn't have a plot as much as it has a series of unrelated and astonishingly unfunny sketches. It's like SNL had a baby with a sentient piece of raw sewage. Whatever we want. Whatever... We want? Whatever we want. This goes on for some time. Also, didn't they have at least some assistance at the Hotel Transylvania? I know this boring parents finally get a break from the kids fantasy plays to a certain part of the audience, but like everything in this movie is dialed up to 11 to boil all the humor out of it. You are so right, great grandfather. Villain poses as love interest of the protagonist before immediately showing her long lineage of evil cliche. And so I began to search for an answer. This is a character reading for exposition during narration in a flashback. This is like the turducken of sin moments. This movie has achieved maximum sin ducking. Endlessly, I searched for the lost city. And I did this instead of finding virtually any other way to kill this one individual. Also, I mean seriously, even if one man alone can't take Drac out, there are so many other things to try. Try to burn the castle down. Recruit an army to seize it. Recruit a relocation service to move the entire castle to the equator. This is the most convoluted and expensive plan ever conceived. Even dumber than Operation Faithful Patriot. A full 90 seconds of an alternative Bruno Mars video for 24 karat magic that's almost as stupid as the original video. The movie is now taking a few minutes for an attempted murder dance montage. I swear the actual script of this thing must have been like five pages. Oh, it doesn't make any sense. You can't zing twice. Well, I mean, it's all dependent on medication you take and the length of the refractory period and of course the willingness of your partner, so I wouldn't say you can't. Also, jokes aside, what the hell is with this rule? Dracula is essentially a mortal as long as he follows certain rules about crosses in the sun. Did the universe seriously set up a general rule that even if you live forever, you can only be content with one person? I mean, Ariana Grande has already broken this rule several times. 
times, and she's only 25. Why is the water up to Drac's waist but below Mavis's when we know for a fact that Drac is quite a bit taller than Mavis out of the water? Aside from the fact that this Bigfoot joke is the same Bigfoot joke as the last five times we've seen it in this movie alone, can this movie make up its mind on his size? Somehow he was able to sit inside a plane that would now easily be crushed by his step. Why do so many of the monsters need a scuba tank? Like, the vampires are already dead, so they don't need to breed. Same goes for the mummy, right? Really, the only one that needs this is Johnny. And movie said f*** off to that character 30 minutes ago. Huh, I guess convoluted, stupid, expensive, unnecessary plans really do run in the Van Helsing family. Thinking it was too obvious to jump the shark, the movie literally decided to hypnotize it and ride it around the ocean. Was that f***ing Johnny? A human? Swimming over an active volcano that's currently erupting? God damn, this movie's stupid. So, the legs are what caught your suspicion and not the obvious mechanical submarine? Every car loves the drag! The fact that this movie stupidly wastes talents like Keegan-Michael Key makes me mad enough to mummify my monitor, so I don't have to watch any more of this bull Complimenter, your neck looks delicious! Yeah, about that, none of the three full vampires and one half vampire have eaten on this entire trip. It's not like there are many humans to pick from, too. So Drac's gonna need to make a move regardless, unless he wants to start snacking on poor f***ing Johnny. Phew, that was a close one. Oh yeah, remember that K story that I'm sure will have a huge impact on the overall narrative? Yeah, me neither. Hope you people that paid the extra in the theater for the 3D images of drool being thrown in your face were extremely satisfied. Har har, this menu's full of so many bad puns and cliches, it just got greenlit as a family comedy on Netflix. Also, there's a lot of bullshit on that menu, but still, no blood, despite knowing this is exactly where vampires go on vacation. Have you a beverage to quench me of my parchment? Damn, even the chupa cameos are overstuffed in this movie. Erica Guacamole? That's so international. That's so racist. I guess the movie's been holding that fart joke in for almost 10 minutes, which has got to be some kind of a record. My wife died. How old was your daughter? She was just an infant. Man, we're getting some Highlander-style bullshit on the ages here. Drac is obviously super old, but he looks middle-aged. And you can assume he was turned into a vampire around that age. But Mavis is 126, and she looks like a goth Selena Gomez, right? But she had an infancy? My point is, like every other vampire movie before, you just give us some goddamn rules. Aww. That was a cute tune, honey. Well, it's been fun. Last one out, turn out the lights. We're done here. We've been up all night. Let's stay up all day, too. Let's get wild. <laughs> I'm not sure which of the endless side plots in this flaming pile of a movie is the most pointless, but Lupine Duggars ditching their pups is the leader in the clubhouse for sure. You've been sneaking around my back trying to kill Dracula again, haven't you? So what if I have? Despite everyone being in the proper place to eavesdrop all over this ship, this loud argument is totally private. In fact, when Mr. Pink and Superstar finally do show up, they haven't heard There's a place you gotta be. Discount Mr. Oogie Boogie. Welcome to Atlantis. Yep, the apex of the culture of humanity throughout all of history is visualized as a f***ing Las Vegas casino. Frank! Yes, dear, got it, no gambling! I honestly think the cast has lost track here and think they're making Grown Ups 3, which takes place entirely in Monte Carlo. I can't lie to my own daughter anymore. She's the most important person in the world to me. And I'm reciting my character motivations so that they will be clear to the audience who may have fallen asleep 30 minutes ago. Maybe he's with Bob. Why would he be with Bob? Bob's a great guy. Is it me or is Johnny getting more and more stupid in this series? Whatever zing Mavis saw in him in the first place has apparently been smoked out of him. Man, security at Atlantis, the most secretive location in the entire world, by the way, is way looser than I thought it would be. I honestly can't tell if this mustache gag is actually kind of funny or if it's just the thinnest kid at Fat Gang. Either way, it's sad when this is the closest you get to a laugh in a movie that's supposed to be... Checking my notes. Yep, a comedy. Holy Jesus, this chase scene is taking so f***ing long, I think it's about to take the record from Bullet. Humans? Monsters? What's the difference? Well, for one, monsters are apparently allowed to party in a location that's been hidden from everyone in history with no supervision. I'm here to get that. Yeah, it's a family heirloom. Yeah, it was lost at, at sea. Catherine Hahn usually has a very distinct voice, but you could have easily convinced me that this was Jennifer Aniston. This is like Catherine Hahn literally doing a Jennifer Aniston impression, and it's distracting as f***. This scene with their black and white outfits and setting off booby traps only makes me long for a really well done spy versus spy movie. Or the sweet release of death. I'd honestly take either at this point. Oh, that was incredible. Man, good thing none of those arrows are made out of 
Would? Aren't there several sticking into where Drac's heart would be, even if they came through his back? He's pretty f***ing dead right now, right? Drac decides to run Erica out of here instead of simply flying, since we gotta stretch this motherfucker for as long as it'll go. I could never be with a monster! Oh, sweet. If we're already at the protagonist fight right before the end of the movie cliche, that means it's almost done, right? Right? But a zing never lies. Really? Is this another solid attribute of a zing? Or, like the previously mentioned only zinging once, is it one that might change? Is there a zing king who decides on these things? At monster weddings, do they have zing bearers? Does some marriage survive on a zing and a prayer? Can you have a zing fling? Is a divorce considered a zing and a miss? I'm just saying this whole zing thing is plot-contrived nonsense, and well-deserving of at least 30 zing-a-ding-dings. I know I made an Oogie Boogie crack before, but I mean, between the Halloweenish theme, the cranky old genius with a god complex that's stuck in a mobility device, the sheltered daughter figure looking for more to her existence, the implementation of a whole new world, and the singing sack of bugs out in the water, we've got an honest to god nightmare before Christmas ripoff. I'm just gonna go ahead and send this for being way too many minutes of a rave that even I'd be too old for, let alone monsters who've been around for hundreds of years. What's most important to understand is that love is an infinite enigma. What I'd like to understand is where this spotlight is coming from that is following him during his blue light special, because it's never even addressed. Of course, part of me is glad, considering they probably would have just panned up to see some sort of monster eating baked beans whose farts have a blue glow. So, silver linings, I guess. You can't deny Zing. Monster, human, unicorn. God damn it, that's the second overt allusion to bestiality in this movie. And I'm freaked out that whomever wrote it is getting into the minds of the current generation. <laughs> So is everyone okay with dying? This took several seconds to set up, which is a ton of time for Drac or Mavis to run up there and snatch the music. Are they all just too curious to see how this bullshit ending turns out? Listen to the melody of your destruction. <laughs> if you'd gotten Megadeth up there, you could have had an entire symphony. So let's talk about Van Helsing's plan, shall we? Somehow convince all the monsters to go on a cruise on a ship his daughter captains to get them out to the lost city of Atlantis. And even though he already has the location of this secret weapon and knows all about it, he waits until they're all there to try and retrieve it. And since he had a synth ready, he must have known that inside was a dubstep song that had survived the destruction of the city and any kind of water damage so that he could play it with all the monsters gathered at a rave. He also somehow knew that this would initiate the crack to attack and destroy the monsters who again somehow all decided on their own to take the this vacation. Do I have that right? Do I? Then release the Kraxons! <laughs> to be fair, this is also my immediate and visceral reaction to hearing dubstep. We're trapped! But many of you can fly and you can take other- God damn it, this is pointless. I've written so many Kraken-related sins here that it's getting redundant in my head, so just trust me when I say more bullshit than a Pirates of the Caribbean sequel and that'll cover it. It's time to start a new legacy! A monster human legacy. Aww, kinda like Kanye and Kim? Get ready for a DJ battle! You just carry all that stuff around with you? Yakety Drax has a point, but would still suck at cinema sense because that's how much I hate this movie. No credit given. Suck it, fan gang. We're gonna use good music to defeat his evil music. And you know this works because, oh, just forget it. Can someone just say they all live crappily ever after so we can call it a day? I'm had enough of worry. this nonsense! Oh, dude, you don't even know how bad it is to watch it. I liked this magical DJ scene when I saw it years ago in Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, so I was about an extra 40 cents for how long, boring, and unnecessary this shit is. K.O., motherfucker. This cape has shown zero Doctor Strange tendencies this entire movie, but is now dancing the Macarena on its own, because that's the song that defeated the musically hypnotized singing Kraken to save the monsters. Did someone bother to say this stuff out loud at any point in the writer's room? Plush product placement meets slime product placement. Slime, plush. Movie and hopefully franchise ends on one of the least important plot points in the history of the fucking franchise. Although, look, I might be talked into seeing a spin off that features that jazz fish group, but I've said too much. And if I see Van Helsing, I swear to the Lord I will slay him. Could there be a female gremlin? Lipstick, boobies, bitch, you have me, and little gremlin but JJ. I love it so much that it's not only in the movie, but it's definitely in the movie. I'm gonna go check on you know who. I'll be right back! I have waited so long to meet you. I'm gonna roll you into a little ball and shove you up my vagina. It's warm, it's cozy. You could just live there. 
I replaced my failing organs with technology! Exterminate! Exterminate! Let's name the zones, the zones, the zones. Let's name the zones of the open sea. Hey, look, it's the Grudge! Release the Kraken!